Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a closer look at the alkyl group. Appendages that are connected to chains of carbon molecules, hydrocarbons, are called alkyls when the contents of the appendages are made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms, as opposed to other atoms, which then they call them functional groups. So when it's specifically made out of carbon and hydrogen, like these examples all are, then we'll call them specifically alkyl. It's basically an alkane with a missing H atom. You simply remove one atom from an alkane and you have an alkyl, which can then be connected to another chain. For example, here we have n-butane, which is linear butane. We have four carbon atoms. We remove these atoms right here, a carbon and three hydrogens. And of course, a carbon with three hydrogens is basically a methane minus a hydrogen atom, which then is called a methyl. And then we can connect it to one of the carbons in the chain. Of course, we have to make sure that hydrogen is removed, and then we can connect carbon to carbon with a single bond like this. That allows us then to turn n-butane into isobutane, which is also called methylpropane, or 2-methylpropane, because the methyl group which is called an alkyl, is connected to the second carbon. So here are some examples of the type of methyl groups that will, or I should say alkyl groups, that we'll run into. Some of the more simple ones, we have the methyl group, which is a single carbon and three hydrogens, like we have over here. Then we have ethyl, which is ethane minus a single hydrogen, which is a CH2 and a CH3. We have an n-propyl, which is propane minus a single hydrogen, which is CH2, CH2, CH3 chained together. We have n-butyl, which is four of these carbons chained together, so CH2, 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 and CH3, and onward. Of course, we can have longer, longer chains like that. We can also have what we call isopropyl. Now take a look at n-propyl and isopropyl. n-propyl has three carbons. So this isopropyl, one, two, three, and it has three, five, seven hydrogens, and so does isopropyl, three, six, seven hydrogens. So chemically, it's exactly the same, but it's arranged differently. Notice that we connect this group to the chain here, where we have this carbon connected to another carbon, then we have the two carbons like this, and a hydrogen at the end like that. So we have a CH3, a CH3, a C, and an H, connected, which forms what we call an isopropyl group. And if we have a carbon like this with three CH3s, like we do in this case, that is called T-butyl for tertiary butyl because it has three what we call methyl groups connected to the single carbon, which together forms another group called the T-butyl group. So those are some simple examples of alkyls that we see often connected as an appendage to another chain, to another hydrocarbon molecule. So that's how we recognize them. That's what we call them. We call them alkyls, and they do change the property of the, of the molecule somewhat by making it into a different isomer. However, we have already found that typically isomers don't vary that much in their properties, even when you attach appendages like that. And that's what we know. That's how we know what alkyls are.